Okay, you guys, it's the next day. I'm kind of confused what day it is, so I'll just say the next day. And I know you're wondering what these things are. <laughs> they are post-its, and I have an obsession with post-its. So I don't know what that has to do with the Parkinson's, but all of a sudden I write everything on them. I think because I have problems remembering now. But anyway, we're going to learn a little bit Ayurvedically about the Mucuna. And that's actually the Latin name. It's not um, really the name that we use, so I keep stumbling on the name, but uh, Mucuna is the most popular name, it seems, that everyone knows it by. Um, if you're trained you, in Ayurveda or practice Ayurveda, you probably know it as Kappa Chu. Probably saying that wrong, but that's basically how it's said. Um, I don't know if anyone knows too much about the, the um, herb, but it's actually a it's actually a bean. And I'm going to show you the picture from this book. I'm not sure if that's allowed, but if it's not, I'll take this video down. But I'm going to say where the book is from and the author, so I think it's okay. I'll show you part of it in case it's not. But this is what the, the bean actually looks like. It's like a, a broad bean. And here's the book that I'm taking it from. It's actually one of my old textbooks. And the herbalist is Sebastian Pohl. And he's, I think he's from the UK. And he is um, really one of the best herbalists in Ayurveda. And then this is the name of the book, Ayurvedic Medicine. Principles of, t of a Traditional Practice, and this is a book commonly used to train Ayurvedic um, counselors and practitioners. So I'm just going to say random things about the actual bean. And again, remember this is um, from an Ayurvedic medicine perspective. Um, I thought it was interesting to know it's a climbing bean, and it's a, it grows mainly in India, but there are a couple more places that it grows, and that's one important thing because Ayurvedically we're trained that the herb ha has to be grown kind of in the same climate, like you can't take this bean necessarily and grow it somewhere else, um, because it's not going to have the same properties as the original bean. Just to explain that, so we really watch the that we're not overuse it in the herb because once that herb runs out, there's nothing else that we can do. Okay, used in excess, the bean can be overstimulated, and that's because of the dopamine. Um, and in Ayurveda, it's often combined with milk and honey. So I'm thinking that question about not being able to use it with hot because the dopamine dies. I, I'm kind of leaning towards that you maybe could, could use it. Maybe not use it with something really, really hot, but maybe something mildly um, warm would be okay. Uh, dosage. I've looked at a different different websites, different books, and um, what the Ayurvedic book recommends is um, 5 to 15 grams per day, which is actually a lot lower than the, some of the Parkinson's books say, and I think there was a test or something, uh, actual like clinical research, to say that the, that the maximum dose was 30 grams. I haven't seen anyone take anything higher than 30 grams. It's better if you start low. Um, and I calculate, but please be calculated again, that there are four teaspoons and about 16 grams. So that's something important. You have to like convert everything to, and you have to probably have someone double check it because my calculations were wrong at first. Okay, I have some um, notes on when you cannot use 
the herb. Um, and this again is from um, an Ayurvedic perspective. We don't use it in, um, we call it high ama, which is high toxins. So that would be like if you're sick, um, some kind of temporary short sickness or any kind of like permanent or permanent illness that you ha would have a high toxicity. Um, how you can check this is by looking at your tongue and if you have a, a large um, white white coating then you um, most likely from an Ayurvedic perspective um, have high toxins and that, that could be due to anything. It could be mostly due to what you're eating. Um, if you have a light coating, that usually means that maybe you were, you were born under a certain, um, we call them dosha, like um, body type. So, it, you know, it is not uncommon to have a light coating and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you don't want to use it if you have congestion, like a cold. Again, this is from an aerobic perspective. But from a Parkinson's perspective, you can't do without your medication, so you're going to have to take it. I would imagine, but I don't want to offer any advice. That's just what I would do in the situation. And then any acute condition. So any time that you um, have any other disease other than Parkinson's or any other symptoms, um, you're going to have to check with your doctor. Okay, this was interesting too. I read that the, the herb helps with digestion, uh, which is something we suffer from. It helps with pain, gas, and constipation. And not to be too personal, but I have noticed that it really has helped with my constipation.